Hello chess lovers, Surnan here and in this video I want to share with you another aggressive attacking game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. In this game Tal's opponent is Soviet chess grandmaster David Bronstein. This game was played in 1966 during a training match. As you know both players had fierce attacking styles but soon we will see that just from the opening it will be Tal who will force his opponent to take the defensive side. Uh, Tal had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Bronstein answered with French defense. Knight d2 Tarash variation is on the board against which we have the open system c5. Knight g f3, knight f6. In here c takes d4 or knight c6 are among the popular alternatives but in the game we see knight f6 with which black is provoking white to play e5 something which Tal did and then Tal strengthened his center by playing c3. Knight c6, bishop d3 and f6 this time black is undermining white center from the king side. But the downside of this move is that this is somewhat weakening the king side and relying on that fact Tal went for a very aggressive knight g5 sacrifice. I have to tell you that according to modern theory e takes f6 is considered to be the main move and knight g5 sacrifice is considered to be inaccurate because black can gain advantage. But we will cover this line starting with f takes g5 once I finish the main game. For now let's not deviate too much. But uh, by the way, if you remember previously, I have already shared with you Tal vs. Salnikov game where uh, Black first went for the exchange on d4 and only then played f6. And it was in that game that again we saw this knight g5 sacrifice. In that case, Salnikov's position went down really very quickly. But Bronstein is a world class elite player, and now you will see that. Uh, his resistance will be really very tough. To knight g5 he answered with knight takes e5 and only after d takes e5 he accepted the peace sacrifice. Uh, queen h5 check, there we have it. White is proceeding with harassing black king, king d7, knight f3 coming after the pawn on g5, also strengthening the pawn on e5, g6, and there comes bishop takes g6 relying on the vulnerable square of black rook but in return Bronstein found a very strong g4 move with which he both wants to deflect the queen and also by harassing this knight he wants to uh, weaken the pawn on e5. For example now if knight g1 then simply bishop g7 can follow. That's why to g4 Tal answered with a very sharp uh, knight g5 move. But he left the pawn on e5 unprotected and we have knight takes e5. Knight takes h7. Anyways, white is managing to find a target. Knight takes g6. Queen takes g6. Bishop e7. And I have to tell you that all in all we have an equality. This black king has a nice defensive shield. And uh, that gives a huge solidity. Yertal played bishop g5. Queen g8. Meanwhile, black wants to uh, simplify the position with the exchange of queens. Knight f6 check. Bishop takes f6. But... Uh, Tal is keeping the queens alive and in return is still creating problems for his opponent. Rook h5 by Bronstein, queen e7 check, king c6, bishop f4 and a very strong move by Bronstein e5. It turns out that at this point only e5 is the move which is allowing black to save the game. Uh, by sacrificing this pawn Bronstein is managing to switch his queen into the defense thus repelling the scary attack. Already queen c7 is not dangerous. We have king b5 and yes uh, still we have an equality. Uh, in, it may seem that black king is in danger but there is not much white can do. Queen d6 checks seeing that uh, there are no weaknesses in black's position. Tal is offering the exchange of queens. b6 by Bronstein. Well uh, queen takes d6 is also playable. And then d4, but Bronstein chose b6, and only in here the exchange of queens on e6 followed. Bishop g3, d4. Bronstein is getting a passed pawn, but it seems like that there is no way of making use of that fact. Opposite color bishops are on the board, and yeah, we have an inequality. Rook c3, rook h e1, bishop d5, rook e7, bishop takes g2. 
rook b1 white is still creating to do something with this king but um, there's not much you can do you know the queens are exchanged and uh, still black king feels pretty well a5 king b5 although uh, b takes a5 is also playable king b5 by Bronstein and after rook d7 the players agreed to a draw but this is very strange you know it turns out that once you're making this rook d7 move uh, you're losing the game yes at this point we have an equality but rook d7 is a losing move the problem with this move is that uh, this allows a uh, black rook to occupy the e file and target white king for example now if rook takes d4 then bishop f3 follows and white king is uh, in danger for example what are you going to play uh, if king c1 then rook a2 this time and yes white is losing and uh, then check and yeah it's over you're losing your rook but strangely after rook d7 the players agreed to a draw quite possibly Bronstein hurried with his decision and agreed to a draw very early yes he underestimated the power of this rook e8 move followed by bishop f3 uh, yeah Blake is winning uh, anyways, uh, this was a very sharp attack by Mikhail Talbot, all hail to Bronstein that he managed to repel this attack. And now let's go back to move 5 and see what's the problem with knight g5. The thing is that in here, black can actually play f takes g5. And uh, modern players are avoiding this line. For example, in 2010, when Magnus Carlsen was playing against Ponomaryov, he captured on f6. Uh, so black can win the knight and if queen h5 check then g6 if bishop takes g6 then h takes g6 and then king e7 if knight e4 opening up the bishop's diagonal then black has knight d takes e5 freeing the d7 square uh, for the king if bishop takes g5 then king d7 still white queen is under attack you can't win black queen and now if knight f6 check then king c7 and suddenly yes black is managing to find a safe shelter for his king if knight e8 check then black can sacrifice the queen but this is a temporary sacrifice because after bishop g7 it's white queen who is trapped here you can make a tricky move like bishop d8 trying to lure away the knight and free this e7 square for the queen but black can simply answer with king b8 and then if bishop e7, a very beautiful move, right? Provoking rook takes e8. In this case, you can announce a checkmate. But to bishop e7, black can simply answer with b6, still keeping the queen on e8 trapped. If queen takes a8, then knight d3 check. And in this case, yes, as I've already mentioned, black is even getting a better chances in the end game c takes d4 if h4 then e5 yeah black has a massive central pawns and then the pawn on d4 drops and the engine gives black more than minus three advantage so i'm sure that this is the reason that modern players are avoiding this line starting with knight g5 because in the era of engines all the grandmasters have nice analysis and they know that this sacrifice leads to nowhere all in all, this was a very interesting game. Hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, will pin Salnikov's game in the comment section. Check that out, please, as well. And in the end, let's solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move, and I will wait for your answers in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video.